the at Chew Mystery. I'm almost ready for the party. I just need one more thing. The smell of my new rose-scented perfume. Sally, what's taking you so long? It's almost time for our beginning of summer party to start. Okay, guys, I'll be right down. Hey, I recognize that horn. It's Big Will and Pig Won't. The party's in the backyard. We'll meet you there. Hi, guys. So what do you think? The decorations look good. No, they don't. They look great! But where is everybody? You're the first ones here. So, you can help us pick out music for the dance. Uh, dance? Nobody told us this is a dance party. Yeah, we don't even know how to dance. Do you? Not really. But it's fun to make something up. Huckle's right. Watch me. Hi, guys. Welcome to the party. Mmm. Something smells really nice. Like roses. Thanks, Lily. It's my new rose-scented perfume. Hi, everyone. I can't wait to get dancing. Oh, nice flowers, Sally. Thanks, Hilda. I picked them especially for the party. Do you know how to dance, Hilda? I sure do, Pig Won't. That's a weird dance. Uh, I don't think that's a dance. I think Hilda's about to sneeze. Are you okay, Hilda? I am now. Sorry about the mess. Uh-oh, I feel like sneezing again. And now I don't. Do you have a cold, Hilda? I don't think so, Huckle. Then what's making you sneeze? I don't know. I've never, ever, ever sneezed like that before. Never, ever, ever? Team, it looks like we have a... Mystery! Busy Town Action Song News! This is Goldbug for Busy Town Action News. It seems we have our first mystery of the summer, Huckle. That's right, Goldbug. Something's making Hilda sneeze like a hurricane. And we're going to find out what. Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! Looks like this mystery's nothing to sneeze at, folks. So stay tuned as Huckle and his team solve the at shoe mystery. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. I'll go get you a hanky, Hilda. So, Hilda, do you have any idea what made you sneeze? I don't know, Loli. I just felt like I had to sneeze all of a sudden. And now, suddenly, I don't. Uh-oh. And now I do again! <laughs> Oops. Sorry, guys. <sighs> I think maybe we should take Hilda to see Doc Lion. Good idea. I'll stay here and tidy up the yard so we can get the party started as soon as you get back. Come on, guys. Let's get busy town. Now open wide and say ah. So, Dr. Lion, do I have a cold? No, Hilda. You have an allergy to something that's making you sneeze. An allergy? What's that? I know, I know. An allergy is when something makes you itch, cough, or sneeze. But what is it that Hilda's allergic to? That's what we have to find out to solve the mystery. Hilda didn't start sneezing until she arrived at the party. Yeah, maybe we'll find out what made her sneeze back there. Come on! Thanks for your help, Doc Lion. Anytime, kids. Good luck. 
Hi, guys! I got the backyard ready for the party again. And I picked a Get Well bouquet for Hilda. Uh-oh! There goes her nose again! Ah! Phew! It's okay, guys. I don't feel like sneezing anymore. That's good. But I wonder what got you sneezing again. Here, Hilda. I got your daisies back for you. <gasps> Quick, Sally! Get back! What is it? What did I do? Doc Lion told us Hilda is allergic to something. And I just realized that she sneezes every time you bring daisies near her. I think Hilda is allergic to daisies. Are you sure about that, Uncle? No, but we can certainly find out. Hmm, I thought I had this solved. But it looks like Hilda isn't allergic to daisies after all. That's great! Then I can give her my Get Well bouquet. <gasps> Jesus! Oh, no! oh! <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Why did Hilda sneeze when Sally brought the daisies to her? Hey, maybe Hilda is only allergic to a bunch of daisies. Let me try. Huh. She's still not sneezing. But if Hilda isn't allergic to daisies, what is making her sneeze? Let's see. Sally took the daisies to Hilda and she sneezed. Then Loli took the same daisies to Hilda and she didn't sneeze. Uh-oh. If Loli or the daisies didn't make Hilda sneeze, maybe Sally did. Huh? Hilda's allergic to Sally? That's silly. And I'll prove it. Uh-oh. Look out, Sally! <gasps> it looks like Hilda is allergic to me. This is terrible. But at least we solved the sneezing mystery. Right, Huckle? Maybe not. It doesn't make sense that Hilda is suddenly allergic to Sally when she never was before. It must be something else. But if Sally is making me sneeze, I can't come to your party. I'll ruin it. See you guys. <gasps> Sorry, Mr. Frumble. I'll get your hat for you. Hilda sneezed again, but Sally wasn't anywhere near her. I wonder what made Hilda sneeze this time. I don't know. But I smell roses again. It's coming from the roses on Mrs. Gardner's rose bushes. Hey, Hilda sneezed when she passed the rose bushes just now. Maybe the roses made her sneeze. <laughs> Allergic to roses and Sally. Roses and Sally? That's it. Uh huh. I've just solved our mystery. <laughs> so, Huckle, tell us what you know about this sneezing mystery. Sure, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened Hilda started sneezing when she arrived at our party. We thought she might have a cold. Doc Lion told Hilda that she didn't have a cold. She had an allergy to something. At first, we thought that Hilda was allergic to Sally's daisies. But Hilda didn't sneeze when she held a bunch on her own. So she must be allergic to something else. Then I realized that Hilda sneezed when Sally was around her and stopped when Sally wasn't. It looked like Hilda was actually allergic to Sally until Hilda sneezed when she passed some rose bushes and we realized she was allergic to roses. Then I remembered that Sally put on a new perfume for the party. Hilda isn't allergic to Sally, but to Sally's new rose-scented perfume. So it's my perfume that's making Hilda sneeze, not me. But how can we make sure, Huckle? Easy, Loli. We'll do a test. Come on, team. Get ready, everyone. Right, Sally? 
It was your rose-scented perfume that made me sneeze. Mystery solved. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Three for Huckle! There you have it, folks. Huckle and his team have solved the Achu mystery. This is Goldbug signing off. Now all I have to do is wash off this perfume and we can finally get our party started. Thanks for solving the mystery, Hackle. And for saving our party. Okay, everyone, it's dance time. Uh-oh, guys. Are you allergic to something now, too? <laughs> We're not allergic to anything. We're doing a dance we just made up. It's called the Hilda. You just grab your nose and pretend like you have to sneeze. It's the best dance ever. <laughs> <laughs> The Missing Laundry Mystery. Whoops, there it goes. Out of the park. Don't worry, we'll find it. We're good at finding things. It's in the trash can. Where'd it go? We found it! It's right there in Huckle's hands. Told you we were good at finding things. <gasps> Boy, some folks in busy town sure are messy. Hi, kids. What do you think of my squeaky clean street cleaning machine? It's a super powerful mobile vacuum cleaner designed to keep busy town streets nice and clean. The small hose at the front is for small messes, and the big hose at the back is for big messes. And best of all, my squeaky clean street cleaning machine is totally silent. Not even a squeak? Nope, not a sound. Well, <laughs> except for this. I better be off. I've got lots of streets to clean. Wow, a Mr. Fix-It invention that actually works the way it's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's play! Me! Me! Help! What was that? Esther! What's wrong? I was hanging up my laundry and turned around for some clothespins, and when I turned back, my laundry was gone! Gone! How could all my clean clothes just disappear in the blink of an eye? I don't know, Esther. But the one thing I can tell you is it's a... Mystery! Busy Town Action Huggies! So, what about it, Huckle? Have Esther's clean clothes fallen prey to a dirty trick? I'm not sure, Goldbug. But I'll find out by figuring out what happened to Esther's clean clothes and solve the missing laundry mystery. Ready for it? Here goes! What, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! Important news updates. Go bug out! We just solved the mystery! We know what happened to Esther's clothes! Someone took them! Who? We don't know that, but we do know that whoever it was is big! How can you know they're big if you don't even know who it is? Because only someone big could wear Esther's clothes. I don't think anyone took them because no one could take all of Esther's clothes off a clothesline and run away with them, all in the blink of an eye. It's just not possible. Then what did happen to Esther's clothes? Whoa. <gasps> <gasps> wow, it sure is windy today.
today? That's it. Maybe a big wind blew Esther's clothes away. That's possible. If the wind was strong enough and came all of a sudden, it could have blown Esther's clothes away in the blink of an eye. Well, if the wind did blow the clothes away, they can't be far. Let's look around. I'm good at finding things, so I'll find the missing clothes. But I'm better at finding things, so I'll find them first. I found them! Where did you find that? Next door, at the Mouse family's house. But that's the Mouse family's laundry. Look how small the clothes are. Oh, I thought maybe they'd shrunk in Esther's washing machine. Ah, I knew you wouldn't find Esther's clothes because I'm going to find them. No, you're not. I am! There's no sign of Esther's missing laundry anywhere. Which means the wind couldn't have blown it away. Because if it had, we would have found at least one piece of clothing by now. But if it wasn't the wind, what could have happened to it? Help! Not again. Miss Honey, are you all right? Yes, but I was sitting on my deck chair and stood up to adjust the cushion. And when I sat back down, my chair was gone. In the blink of an eye? Why, yes, in the blink of an eye. How did you know? The same sort of thing just happened to Esther's laundry. But how is that possible? That's what we're trying to figure out. Did you see anything? Not a speck. Did you hear anything? Not a peep. Don't worry, Miss Honey. We'll find your chair for you. Over here! No! Over here! No, here! Over here! Over here! There must be some kind of clue around here somewhere. What happened to your hedge? That's funny. That hole wasn't there a few minutes ago. Hey, that hole looks just like a deck chair. You're right. Miss Honey's chair must have gone through the hedge, and that's what made the hole. Do you think someone ran off with the chair right through the hedge? We found it! We found your deck chair, Miss Honey. Told you we were good at finding things. But that's not my deck chair. What you found is a park bench. Huh. Maybe that's why it was in the middle of the park. Good thing we're also good at putting things back. Look, a shortcut! <laughs> Look, Pig Will and Pig Won't left footprints in this flower bed. Of course they did. They just ran through it carrying a park bench. No, Huckle's saying that if someone carried Miss Honey's deck chair through the hedge, they would have left footprints too. Oh, but if there are no footprints, then that means that no one took Miss Honey's chair. But if no one took the chair, what happened to it? Hey, where's my tool shed? And my bird bath's gone, too. And what happened to the porcupine twins' wading pool? It was right there a minute ago. I just got a call from Mr. Frumble. Something just mysteriously disappeared at his place. In the blink of an eye? Why, yes. How did you know? Because it seems the whole neighborhood is disappearing in the blink of an eye. Hmm. Does this have anything to do with your latest mystery? It sure sounds like it. Then you'd better follow me. I, I was cooking my lunch and turned around for my barbecue flipper. And when I turned back, it was gone. Your lunch was gone? My whole barbecue was gone in the blink of an eye. But that's not possible. I'm glad you're on this case, Huckle, because I'm stumped. What is this stuff? Seeing as it's where Mr. Frumble's barbecue was standing when it disappeared, it might be barbecue sauce. How do we know for sure, Hucko? Well, let's compare it to this barbecue sauce. It's the same color. And they're both sticky. <laughs> and they both smell the same. So we can be pretty sure it is barbecue sauce. Well, at least we figured that out. And more importantly, we figured out something else. This trail of sauce means the barbecue didn't just disappear into thin air, it went that away. The sauce trail has stopped. Which means that Mr. Frumble's barbecue went to the front of the house, then it disappeared. 
Did you see anything at all, Mr. Frumble? Not a speck. Did you hear something? Nope, not a peep. Hmm, just like Esther's laundry and Miss Honey's chair. Why is everything suddenly disappearing in the blink of an eye? And how come no one has seen or heard anything? What could have possibly made all those things disappear so fast? Hmm. I think I know what happened. Hurry up and tell us, Huckle, before everything in Busy Town disappears. Here's what I think happened. It all started when Esther's laundry disappeared in the blink of an eye, and Esther didn't see or hear anything. Then Miss Honey's chair went missing in the blink of an eye, and Miss Honey didn't see or hear anything either. Then Mr. Frumble's barbecue disappeared. The barbecue sauce trail stopped at the street, so the barbecue was taken by something that had been on the street. Something that didn't make any noise and was powerful enough to whisk things away in the blink of an eye. I couldn't figure out what it was until I saw Mr. Fix-It drive past in his very powerful, very quiet, squeaky clean street cleaning machine. A cleaning machine that sucks up trash in the blink of an eye. So I think it was Mr. Fix-It's street cleaning machine that sucked up all the disappearing things. It looks like Huckle and his pals have cleaned up another mystery. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Hooray, oh, Huckle! Go, Bug. Ah. Don't worry, folks. I'll have your stuff back to you just as soon as I finish hanging up Esther's laundry. <laughs> Look what we found! What does this button do? <laughs> Aren't those esters? Told you we were good at finding things! <laughs> <laughs> the No News Today Mystery. Sally, just as soon as I finish delivering my last paper to Mr. Frumble. Now my arm's all warmed up, ready to pitch some baseballs. Where's Loli? He's supposed to meet us here. Look no further. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, our bat is gone. Let's go to the baseball field and get a real one. Come on. Hey, kids. Uh, you seem to have forgotten to deliver my newspaper. But I did deliver your paper, Mr. Frumble. It's on your front step. No, it's not. I'm sure it's not. But it was here a moment ago. I saw Huckle throw it there myself. It must have blown away. I bet it's around here somewhere. It's not here. Not here either. And it's definitely not here. Uh-oh, it looks like everyone's newspaper has disappeared. This doesn't make sense. You just delivered those papers a few minutes ago. Hmm, so where did they go? I don't know yet, but I do know it's a... Mystery! Busytown Action Photo News! Goldbug here live reporting for Busytown News. So, Huckle, what's the news on this known news mystery? Well, Goldbug, I delivered a bunch of newspapers, but they all seem to have disappeared. So we're going to solve this mystery by figuring out where all the missing newspapers went. Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? So there you have it, folks. 
Huckle and his team are going to solve the no news today mystery. Read all about it in tomorrow's newspaper. Goldbug out. We heard you have a new mystery. Have no fear. Pink Will and I will solve it for you. But you don't even know what the mystery is. It doesn't matter. We'll solve it anyway. Just as soon as we finish collecting things to recycle for Busy Town Recycling Day. So that's what all that trash is for. It's not trash, Sally. Like we said, it's recyclables. Today's the day people leave out stuff to be recycled. Things that are broken or that they don't want anymore. Like paper, cardboard, and plastic. All those things can be reused or made into something new. Instead of being thrown in the garbage. Exactly! Why throw something in the garbage if it can be used again? We couldn't agree more. Look! More recyclables! Exactly what we're looking for! <laughs> more things to recycle over here! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Don't worry! We'll be finished in no time! Then we'll be back to solve the mystery! <laughs> If Pig will and Pig won't keep picking up the same things over and over again, it will go on forever. And Busy Town Recycling Day will turn into Busy Town Recycling Week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's think. Where could those missing newspapers have gone? Maybe someone borrowed them to read. But you'd only take one newspaper to read, not all of them. So someone must have needed a lot of newspapers. Right, Sally. What would someone need a lot of newspapers for? I use newspapers when I make things out of paper mache. Maybe Vincent Van Gogh took them to make a giant paper mache statue. But Vincent Van Gogh only uses food to make art. And newspapers definitely aren't food. Lolly's right. It couldn't have been Vincent Van Gogh. So who else would use a lot of newspapers? <gasps> Look at those movers. They're wrapping things in paper so they don't break when they move them. You're right, Sally. Maybe the movers took the newspapers to use for packing. Let's go find out. Hmm, the movers look like they've lost something. Excuse me, but are you looking for something? Yeah, our cardboard boxes. We had a pile on the lawn by the sidewalk, and now they're gone. What was in the boxes? That's just it, nothing. They were empty boxes waiting to be packed up with stuff we were supposed to move. Now we'll have to get more boxes so we can finish packing. First newspapers, now empty cardboard boxes? What is going on? You haven't solved the mystery yet, have you? No. Good, because we're almost finished collecting stuff to recycle. Then we'll be ready to solve it for you. Back in a jiffy. <laughs> Looks like it might be two jiffies. Maybe even three jiffies. <laughs> this is all very strange. Who would take empty boxes? Maybe someone else is moving and they took the boxes to pack their stuff in. And maybe they took the newspapers to wrap their stuff in too. That makes sense. <laughs> Maybe that's who took the newspapers and the boxes. Let's go see. Huh? What if he runs away? We can catch him with this. So what's the plan, Huckle? Lolly will scare whoever it is out of the bushes. Then you and I will nab him with the basket. Why should I scare him out of the bushes? Why not Sally? Because you can say boo louder than I can. Oh. Lolly? <laughs> what are you doing under that laundry basket? <laughs> <laughs> well, Bruno, we saw your feet and thought you were someone mysteriously hiding in the bushes. I wasn't hiding. I was looking for my red plastic bucket. It was here one minute, then gone the next. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe the same person who took the newspapers and cardboard boxes took Bruno's bucket. But why would anyone want my bucket? It has a big crack in it. It's no good for anything except carrying flowers to plant. <sighs> now I'll have to find something else to carry my flowers in. First the newspapers disappeared, then 
then the empty cardboard box has disappeared, and now Bruno's cracked plastic bucket has just up and disappeared? Something very strange is going on here. Who would go around taking newspapers, empty boxes, and a cracked plastic bucket? It's garbage day. Maybe the trash collector picked up the missing stuff thinking it was trash. Hey, you. I don't think so. Hmm. The trash collector hasn't been by yet. So that means the trash collector didn't take the newspapers, the boxes, or Bruno's bucket. Then where did all those things go? Maybe all the missing things have something in common that might give us a clue. Let's think about what they're each used for. Well, you carry things in boxes. And I suppose you could carry some things in a bucket with a crack in it, like plants ready to be planted. Yes, but you can't carry anything in a newspaper, so that's not it. Okay, then let's think of what the missing things are made of. Newspapers are made of paper. And boxes are made of cardboard. And Bruno said his bucket was made of plastic. Paper, cardboard, and plastic. They're each made of something different. Oh, this is confusing. We're all set to help you solve the mystery. Just as soon as we drop off our last load of recyclables. Huh? Hmm, would you look at that? Paper, cardboard, and plastic. I think I know where Mr. Frumble's newspaper, the mover's cardboard boxes, and Bruno's plastic bucket went. <laughs> Are you saying you've solved the No News Today mystery? Yes, Goldbug, I think I have. Here's what I think happened. At first, we thought the movers had taken the missing newspapers to pack stuff for moving. But it turned out the movers' cardboard boxes were missing, too. Then we thought that whoever was hiding in the bushes might have taken the newspapers and the boxes. But it turned out to be Bruno looking for his plastic bucket. Even though Bruno's bucket had a big crack in it, that disappeared, too. We thought that the trash collector must have taken the newspapers, the boxes, and Bruno's broken bucket, thinking it was all trash. But the trash collector hadn't been by yet. It wasn't until I saw the stuff to be recycled fall out of Pig Will and Pig Won't's truck that I realized that the missing things were all recyclables. Things made out of paper, cardboard, and plastic. I think Pig Will and Pig Won't collected the newspapers, boxes, and Bruno's bucket to add to their recycle collection. Another mystery solved! Everybody all together Solved a mystery with Huckle You can solve one, two, three, four, Huckle! Until next time, this is Goldbug at... What's the matter, Pigwill and Pigwont? Aren't you happy we solved the mystery? But we didn't get to solve it! But even better than solving the mystery, you two were the mystery. We were? Oh, Huckle's right. We were the mystery. But I was the mystery just a teensy bit more than you. We're not. Why still? We're not. Why still? Not. not. The Big Tooth Mystery. Come to a full stop, please. Museum truck coming through. Sally, look! A Tyrannosaurus Rex! Wow! He's as big as a house! Yes! And just look at those teeth! Tyrannosaurus for the Busy Town Museum? That's right, Huckle. And it wasn't easy getting him here. I've already had one traffic accident this morning. What happened? Baker Humperdink bumped his bread truck into the big truck carrying the dinosaur. <gasps> Is Baker Humperdink all right? Yes. Luckily, no one was hurt. A few bones fell off the dinosaur, though. But I think the museum curator can fix it. Phew. That's a relief. Wow. I can't believe Busy Town has its very own Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton. Gee, too bad Loli's not around. He's missing all the action. No, I'm not. I've been watching all the action from up here. You might even say I'm totally glued to it. Get it? <laughs> well, 
yourself. That's one way to get out of a sticky situation. <laughs> <laughs> Say, all this work has made me hungry. Who's up for a hot pretzel? Mmm. Great idea, Lily. I bet Baker Humperdinck has just finished baking a fresh batch. Then what are we waiting for? To the busy town bakery! <laughs> hey! Whoops! What? <laughs> hey, look what I found! It kind of looks like a big tooth. You're right, a very big tooth. Why would a tooth just be lying on the road? And who could such a big tooth belong to? I don't know, but what I do know is this is a... Mystery! This is the Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here, reporting live from the Busy Town Bakery. Open wide and say, ah! ah. Beautiful teeth, Huckle. And speaking of teeth, what mystery are you sinking your teeth into today? Well, Goldbug, I just found a giant tooth and we're going to find out who it belongs to. Okay, ready for it? Here goes! Huckle and his team chew things over and solve the big tooth mystery. Go, Bug, ass! <laughs> hey, look at me! I'm a Tyrannosaurus Rex! <laughs> dinosaur tails don't growl! When do I get my turn to be the dinosaur head? Later? Right now, I'm the head, which means I'm in charge of growling. Fine, but I'm a better growler. Dinosaur tails don't wag either. Do so. Do not. Why are you guys dressed up as a dinosaur anyway? We're helping the Busy Town Museum by giving out free tickets to see the Tyrannosaurus. Can I hand out tickets? No, dinosaur tails don't have hands either. Now come on, let's go. <laughs> this way. Can't you see where we're going? No. Dinosaur tails don't have eyes, either. <laughs> so, where should we begin trying to solve the big tooth mystery? Well, since it's a big tooth, we should start by finding someone really big who might have lost it. Hilda Hippo! Nope, it's not a match. Your teeth are small and round, not big and pointy like this tooth, Hilda. And your teeth are also nice and white, not brownish yellow. I didn't think it was my tooth. I'm pretty sure I'd know if I lost one. Thanks, Hilda. See ya. Bye. What should we do now, Huckle? We need to find someone even bigger than Hilda. Right. There must be someone in Busy Town bigger than Hilda. Let's go find them. Good luck with your mystery. Nope. Ellie's teeth are big, but they're not sharp and pointy. Nope. Jeremy has small square teeth. Not a match for our tooth. And Bruno's teeth are small and pointy, not big and pointy. Hmm. No one in Busy Town has teeth like the tooth we found. Maybe we need to talk to someone who's an expert on teeth? Yeah, like a dentist. Right. I bet Dr. Dentist could help us figure out who this tooth belongs to. Hey, Big Will. 
No! <laughs> it, it won't! I get to be the head now! I have to go to the bathroom! Again? You're drinking too much water! <laughs> okay, to Dr. Dentist's office. Hmm. I've never seen a tooth like this before. But judging by its size, you were right to think that it belongs to someone big. Someone very, very big. Well, we've already checked with Hilda Hippo, Jeremy Giraffe, Ellie Elephant, and Bruno Bear. And the tooth didn't belong to any of them. Well, all I can say is whoever this tooth belongs to has never, ever brushed their teeth. Who would never, ever brush their teeth? Maybe that's why their tooth fell out. <laughs> well, thanks for all your help, Dr. Dentist. Bye, kids. Hi, Baker Humberdink. We heard about your car accident this morning. Are you all right? Yes, but that dinosaur lost some bones. It's okay. Sergeant Murphy said the museum curator could fix it. Excellent. See you. All right, back to our mystery. So we know the tooth belongs to someone big and someone who has never brushed their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> but we've checked everyone who's big in Busy Town. And we still don't know who this big tooth could belong to. It's my turn to be the head. It's not. It's too. <laughs> That's it. I think I know who the tooth belongs to. <laughs> Bug here reporting live from the Busy Town Museum where Huckle has been chewing on a mystery all day. So, Huckle, did you finally solve it? I think so, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. We found a big tooth outside the bakery. So we compared it with the teeth of big Busy Towners. But none of the teeth matched. Some were too round, some were too square, and some were too small. Dr. Dentist said whoever it belonged to had to be very big and never ever brush their teeth. It wasn't until I saw the museum poster with a Tyrannosaurus on it that I noticed the dinosaur was big and he had big yellow teeth. That's when I remembered that Baker Humperdinck bumped his bread truck into the museum truck earlier and knocked some of the dinosaur's bones loose. I think the bump from Baker Humperdinck's truck also knocked one of the dinosaur's teeth loose. It must have fallen out on the way to the museum. So I think the tooth we found this morning belongs to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. There's only one place we can go to see if I'm right. To the museum! Hey, wait for me! Huckle's right. The Tyrannosaurus is missing the exact same tooth. Well, there you have it. Huckle has solved the big tooth mystery. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Hooray for Huckle! I couldn't have done it without the help of my big tooth team. This is Goldbug signing off. I just remembered I have a dentist's appointment. Goldbug out. The Tyrannosaurus tooth. You found it. I thought we'd lost it forever. Thank you. It's millions of years old, you know. Wow, that's a really long time to go without brushing your teeth. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. You can be the head. There's more room to hide inside the tail. No, no, it's okay. You can be the head. <laughs> Just call me Lonely Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Ten Mystery. Just so 
serving up some fun. <laughs> <laughs> to play badminton with us? I can't. The Busy Town Theater is holding dance tryouts for their next show. And I'm going to do a tap dance. Ta-da! Wow, Hilda, that was great. Your shoes are super pretty, too. My dad brought them all the way from France. They were made especially for me, since my feet are so big. I better go or I'll miss my turn to try out. See you! Bye! Good luck! See you later! Hey! You'll never guess what we're doing today. Uh, looking for your pants? No, we're going to do a dance at the Busy Town Theater dance tryouts. Wow, I didn't know you two were trained in ballet. We're not, but how hard can it be? Pig Will is in charge of the throwing, and I'm in charge of the catching. Watch! Okay, now I throw you. And I catch me. Uh-oh, I don't think this is going to work out like we thought. <laughs> At least you had something nice and soft to land on. Me! But I landed on something hard. Look! I wonder what it is. It's a hunk of metal with a big number 10 on it. And look at these tacks. It looks like it was once attached to something but fell off. Hey, maybe it fell off one of those mailboxes. Hmm, good guess, Sally. The mailboxes are metal, but they all have big red numbers on them. Our number isn't red, and it's stamped right into the metal. Right, so it's not from a mailbox. Hey, maybe it's a license plate that fell off one of those cars. Another good guess, but I don't think so, Loli. Those license plates are big pieces of metal, not small ones like ours. Plus, they have blue painted numbers on them. Hmm, you're right. Well, what do you think it is, Huckle? I don't know, but what I do know is that it's a... Mystery! Busy Town Action Bug News! Gold Bug here, putting the pedal to the metal as I race to the scene of a mystery where Huckle and his gang have come across a mysterious piece of metal. That's right, Gold Bug. We found a hunk of metal with a big tent on it, and we're going to find out what it is. Okay, ready for it? Here goes! Huckle and his team solve the Big Ten mystery. Goldbug out! Look! Our tights are ripped! Now our ballet dance is ruined! No problem! I'll just think of another dance we can do! No, I'll think of another dance! Okay, back to the mystery. What else is metal and has a number on it? I know! House numbers! Yeah. Your house is number five, so house number ten must be close by. Maybe its number is missing. Seven? Eight? Nine? Hey, look. This should be house number ten, but the number plate is gone. This is Mr. Frumble's house. Let's ask him. Hey, guys. What's up? Hi, Mr. Frumble. Well, we were wondering if this piece of metal we found is the number plate to your house. We noticed yours was missing. No, mine's right here. I was just giving it a fresh coat of paint. Wow, that looks great. Oops, there goes my hat. Well, if this metal plate isn't from a mailbox, a car, or a house, then what could it be from? I don't know. But maybe someone who works with metal things would know. Great idea, Loli. Blacksmith Beer knows all about things made of metal. For sure he'll know what our mystery metal object is. Hey, check us out! We're clog dancers! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but even the trash cans have more rhythm than you. He means you! No, he means you! Come on, let's go find out what Blacksmith Beer can tell us! Well, it's definitely made of metal, but it didn't come from my shop. It looks like it came from another country. Wow, that's 
cool. Do you know what it is, Blacksmith Bear? I'm afraid not. But what I can tell you is that it has had a lot of wear because there are plenty of scuff marks on it. See? Hey, look! There's something written on the other side. What does it say, Hecko? I don't know. I can't read it. Why? Are the letters too small? No. They're just not words I've ever seen before. Let's see. I think they say... Maison de Chaussure. Hmm. That sounds like a foreign language. Hey, Miss Honey speaks a whole bunch of different languages. Maybe she can read what it says. Great idea, Sally. Let's find out. Thanks. My pleasure. Good luck. Hey, guess what? We're break dancers. Yeah, watch this move. We call it the helicopter spin cycle. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I think your break dance is broken. Loli's right. Maybe you should try a quiet dance number. A oh. quiet dance sounds good. Oh. It sounds less painful. Come on, let's go find Miss Honey. Yes, I do speak several languages. I speak English, hello, French, bonjour, German, guten tag, Spanish, hola, and Japanese, konnichiwa. Wow, Miss Honey, that's amazing. It sure is. So you must know what's written on this medal. Well, it's hard to say clearly because of the scuffs, but I recognize this language. It's French. It says Maison de Chaussures, which in English means House of Shoes. Shoes? I can't think of anyone who wears metal shoes. Miss Honey, do you know what the big number 10 stands for? Well, if it has something to do with shoes, then perhaps the 10 is the shoe size. Oh, like how my shoe size is three? Yes, and mine is six. Then who would wear size 10 metal shoes? I don't know, but they would have to be very big and very noisy when they walk. Hmm, okay. Well, thanks for all your help, Miss Honey. You're welcome. Uh, I don't get it. What could this thing have to do with France or size 10 shoes? We have our dance figured out. We're going to tap dance. So, what do you think? It was great, but there was no sound. So? Well, tap dancing means making tapping sounds while you dance, like Hilda did this morning. Oh, we get it. Like this. Tap, 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 tap. No, you don't understand. You don't make the tapping sounds. Your tap shoes do. Tap dancing needs special tap shoes, like the ones that Hilda's father brought her from France. They have little metal plates on the bottom that make the tapping sound when you dance. Hmm. Size 10. France. Of course! I know what the metal object is. Goldbug reporting live from Miss Honey's house as Huckle announces the big news on the Big Ten mystery. That's right, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. First, we found a strange metal object with a big number 10 on it. It wasn't from a mailbox, a license plate, or a number on a house. Since it was made from metal, we went to see Blacksmith Bear. He didn't know what the metal object was, but said it was made in another country. That's when we saw some small words stamped on it words in a different language. So we went to Miss Honey, who speaks lots of different languages, and she said the writing was French for House of Shoes. It wasn't until I saw the pigs tap dancing that I remembered Hilda's tap dance from this morning. She told us her shoes came from France and were made special because her feet are so big. I think Hilda wears a size 10 shoe and that the piece of metal we found is the tap part from Hilda's tap shoes. It must have fallen off when she was doing her tap dance this morning. But there's only one way to be sure. We need to go to the Busy Town Theater to find Hilda. <gasps> you found my tapper! Ugh, thank goodness! I can't do my tap dance without it. Voila! It's good as new. There you have it, folks. Huckle and his Tip Tap team have solved the Big Ten mystery. Everybody all together.
together Solve the mystery with Huckle You can solve one, two Hooray for Huckle! This is Goldbug signing off Goldbug out! <laughs> That buzzer means it's my turn to dance. Wish me luck. Good, Good luck. luck. Okay, we finally picked a dance. We're going to square dance. Swing, Swing your partner, dozy do. -do. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't worry, he's okay. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> The Whistleblower Mystery. Hi, Mr. Fixit. Ah, Huckle, Sally, and Lowly. Good to see you. Nice day to be out for a drive, isn't it? It is for us, but it looks like you are having some engine troubles. Do you need any help? <laughs> oh, I'm not having engine trouble, Sally. My car is supposed to be letting off a little steam. It's steam-powered. It is? Really? Steam-powered? Yes. The engine heats the water and turns it into steam. Then the steam builds up pressure, and that's what makes the wheels go round. Wow, that's the coolest car ever. Actually, it's really hot because it's full of boiling water and steam. <laughs> well, toodaloo! Bye! Bye, -bye. See ya, Mr. Fixit! Hi, guys! Hi, Big Will! Hi, Big Wolf! Hi, everybody! Hi, guys! Sorry, we can't stop! We're having a Pogo-thon championship! Yep! First I won Pogo Badminton, and now I'm going to win Pogo Basketball! No way! I'm going to win at Pogo Basketball and Pogo Soccer! No, you won't! Yes, I will! Pogo Basketball? Pogo Soccer? <laughs> What's next? Pogo Snorkeling! Great idea! <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? That wasn't my whistle. Oh, dear! That other whistle is causing big traffic problems. But where's it coming from? It's not Sergeant Murphy blowing that other whistle. So who is it? That's what I'd like to know. It looks to me like we have a... mystery! <laughs> Is Goldbug reporting live from a busy town intersection where cars are stuck in jam? I mean, a traffic jam. What's the scope, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, Sergeant Murphy is trying to direct traffic by blowing his whistle. But someone is blowing another whistle, and that's causing all sorts of traffic problems. Two whistles? That sounds confusing. It sure is. That's why we need to solve the whistle-blowing mystery and find out where the other whistle is coming from. Right, team? Right. You know it. Ready for it? Here goes! <gasps> As Huckle and his pals blow the whistle on this latest mystery. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. Hey, the whistle sound came from that way. And that way is where we're going. I'll be the Bogo snorkeling champion. No, you are. Excuse me, but someone's whistle is causing a traffic jam downtown. We think it might be yours. What? 
This little whistle? It can't be. Besides, I just got here. That's the only time I blew my whistle this morning. <gasps> <gasps> Sorry, it's okay to go. No one's crossing the street. Someone else blew a whistle. It wasn't me. The mystery whistleblower. I wonder who it was. I don't see anyone with a whistle. Me neither. Hi, Hi Mr. Fizzit! It came from that direction. Come on, let's go! Follow that whistle! Hmm. You think that bird could be the one doing all the whistling? Well, birds do make lots of different sounds. Maybe this one is a whistler. Guess what, guys? I was the Pogo Snorkeling Champion! You'll have to get dressed later! We've got more pogoing to do! The bird flew that way! Come on! Birdie! There you are! Here it comes! The whistle we've been waiting for! That whistle couldn't stop a caterpillar car! You're right, Loli! Looks like we need to look for someone or something else. Look, there's the soccer referee. And he's got his referee whistle around his neck. Maybe it was his whistle we heard. Hi, Ref. Have you been blowing your whistle? Nope, not yet. The game can't start without me. Are there any games that have started? Not any soccer games. But maybe there's a hockey game going on. Hockey games have referees. And referees have whistles. Come on, team. Do the hockey Pogo ice hockey? <laughs> this Pogothon championship is getting sillier all the time. I'm gonna get a goal! No way! I'm gonna get a goal! <laughs> that must have been the whistle we heard at the intersection. Huh, I guess that settles it. Mystery solved, right, Huckle? Maybe, but we're inside the arena, and the mystery whistle was heard outside. We need to go outside to find out if we can still hear the referee's whistle from there. I can barely hear the whistle out here. Yep, it's not loud enough to stop traffic. That means we have to keep looking. Now that's more like it. Nobody around here with a whistle either. Hello, children. Hello there. Hi, Miss Honey. Hmm. Maybe Miss Honey can help us figure out who's doing the whistling. Uh, Miss Honey, have you seen anyone walking around with a whistle? No, I don't think so, Loli. Why? Well, someone has been blowing a whistle, and it's getting drivers all mixed up. We're trying to find out who it is. And it sounds just like that. Who was that, Miss Honey? <laughs> Why, that's just Mr. Kettle calling me to the kitchen. Mr. Kettle? Do we know him? Come on inside. I'll show you. A tea kettle? You mean that's what we've been hearing all morning? You must have been hearing something else. This is the first pot of tea I've made all day. I never knew a kettle could whistle. How does it work? When the water in the kettle heats up, it turns into steam and builds up pressure. Hey, that reminds me of how Mr. Fix-It's steam-powered car works. You're right, Loli. But what makes your kettle whistle, Miss Honey? When the steam blows out of the spout, it makes a whistling sound. Hmm, so the pressure from the steam makes a whistling sound. That's it. I think I know where the mystery whistle is coming from. <laughs> So tell us, Huckle, are you any closer to solving this mystery? I sure am. Here's what I think happened. We first heard the mystery whistle on the street. It was loud enough to stop traffic. We figured out that it didn't come from the crossing guard, or a bird, or from a referee. It also didn't come from Miss Honey's whistling kettle because she wasn't boiling water when the mystery whistle was heard. But then Miss Honey told us how her kettle works. She explained that when the steam blows through the spout of the kettle, it whistles. That's when I remembered something else in Busy Town that lets off lots of steam. 
Mr. Fix-It steam-powered car. So I think that the loud mystery whistle must have come from Mr. Fix-It steam-powered car. So you're saying that you think Mr. Fix-It steam-powered car is whistling? Uh-huh, but we'll need to find him to know for sure. I think I hear his car coming. Excuse me, Mr. Fix-It. Have you noticed your car making a whistling sound? Sure. My car doesn't have a horn, so instead of honking, I just pull this cord. It lets the steam out through the pipe at the top, like so. You certainly have to hand it to Huckle and his pals. They have a real ear for solving mysteries. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Mm-hmm. In fact, you could say that solving mysteries is Huckle's cup of tea. Go, Thug. <laughs> it's okay! Keep going! Did you know that Sergeant Murphy is steamed up because your whistle sounds like his whistle? And drivers are getting mixed up. Oh, dear. Oh, I didn't know that. But I'll have to do something about it right away. There. That should fix it. Uh, Perfect. First one in the corner is the Poco Stick Champion of the World. Big Lou, watch out for the wet cement. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the Poco Stick won't go, Big Will. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha!